Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the chi-square test in Microsoft Excel. The chi-square test allows us to analyze frequencies in particular categories and determine if observed frequencies are statistically significantly different than expected frequencies. So looking at the example I have here in this Excel worksheet, say that we had a study and we invited 100 males to the study and 150 females to the study. And let's say it was a uh, treatment that we were delivering to, say, treat depression. And we tracked three potential dispositions as a result of a participant being invited to this study. Uh, the first is the participant never attended. The second is that the participant was treated. Of course, this is what we would hope would happen. And then the third is the participant dropped out. And then we track the frequencies that this occurred for both males and females. So in this example, uh, 15 males never attended. 10 females never attended, 67 males were treated, and 118 females were treated, and 18 males dropped out, and 22 females dropped out. So we want to look at this grouping of frequencies. We want to see, is it statistically significantly different from what we would expect to see based on the total number of males and females that were invited to the study. And notice the chi-square can handle uneven quantities for these categories. It doesn't have to be the same number of males as females. Of course, it will work with equal numbers as well, but you can have unequal numbers. So configuring our actual data is fairly straightforward. We just populate the corresponding cell. And, then, and this is the values we have. Of course, these are the totals for each disposition and the totals for male and female. But before we can run the chi-square test, we need to calculate the expected values. And I have those down here. So you'll notice here that the ratio to each of these dispositions is equivalent to the ratio of males to females in the study. And this is calculated for any particular cell by multiplying the column total, so in this case 25, by the row total, which would be 100, and dividing by the total number of participants. So you can see I already have the function in there, but I'm going to delete that and show you how I built this. So it would be column total multiplied by row total divided by the total number of participants. See it comes up with the same value that was there before. So if we follow the same pattern for all six of these cells, we'll end up with the same ratio for each disposition as the total ratio. So this set of data becomes our expected values. So you can see I have the result of the chi-square test already in cell H6. Uh, beneath it here, I'm going to show you how I designed this function. So we'll start with chi-square test. That's the function we're going to want. And the first argument is going to be the actual range. So I have that here. It'll start with uh, 15 and, and move down to the corner 22, so these six values and a comma, and then it's looking for the expected range, which is down here. You can see it produces the same result. So in this case, we would accept the null hypothesis if the alpha was set at 0 0.05, because this is greater than 0 0.05. So we would presume that there is no difference between the groups, because there's no statistically significant difference between the actual observations and the expected values. 
In this example, I have three possible dispositions, and the chi-square test, of course, will work for three. But here, in this other worksheet, I have produced the same study, but you can see the never attended option is no longer available. So let's say in this particular, this particular study, all the participants started treatment, so we only have a treated category and a dropped out category. So if they all started, uh, they were all being treated, and of course some would have dropped out. And we can see here uh, we have different values than in the other um, worksheet. So 90 males treated, 120 females, and then 10 of the males dropped out and 30 of the females. These would be the expected values. Again, so I'll um, delete the function here and show you how I designed this. The same formula. It is the column total times the row total divided by total participants. That's how I arrived at that value of 84. And the same logic goes for all the remaining, the three remaining values. So this set becomes our expected values. Of course, we already know our actual values. So we'll run chi-square test, the actual range, comma, the expected range. And that's how we found this value of 0 0.03. Now that value is statistically significant. So in this example, there is a statistically significant difference between the frequencies observed, the actual frequencies observed, and what we would have expected, the expected frequencies. So a couple of important notes regarding the chi-square. In terms of the values, I'll move back to the first example here. In terms of the values in each cell, it's important that no single value be below 5. Another point is that the arrays have to be the same size. So this is two rows and three columns, and the expected value is two rows and three columns. In this sheet, it's two by two, and the expected is two by two. So the tables are required to have the same dimensions. I hope you found this video on the chi-square test in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.